Hi, this is Katie with Music Mastery, and in this fundamental video, I will be covering the posture, the setup, and the playing position for playing the bassoon, as well as how to put it away. So now, before we touch the instrument, I just quickly want to go over posture. The sitting position for playing the bassoon should be very natural. You want to make sure that your back and shoulders are not slouched, but instead straight and comfortably back. Um, you may be told in class that everybody should be sitting on the front or the edge of their seat, but bassoonists are an exception to this. You should be sitting fully on your chair so that, as you can see later, your seat strap is completely secured under you. I like to keep my feet flat on the floor if I can, so when I'm playing, I feel anchored and relaxed. And now, before I even touch my instrument, um, I go ahead and I start by soaking my reed. Um, when you play bassoon, it's crucial that your reed is thoroughly soaked when you start playing so that it vibrates as much as it's able to. And this isn't possible if you just soak it in your mouth. So I recommend getting something like this. This is a reed soaker cup or even just a medicine bottle. Um, go ahead and fill it with water and pop the reed in. And ideally you should soak your reed for a few minutes so that every part of it, even the inside, is soaked. And I find that the time that it takes me to set up is a good amount of time to soak it for. And now when you're setting up your bassoon, always have the case on the ground or at least on a flat surface um, so that nothing falls out. I like to keep it on the ground. And when you first open your case, you wanna look for something that looks like this. This is called a seat strap and it's what most bassoonists use when they're sitting down. The strap is gonna go across your seat with this hook, or you may have a cup part, on your right. And this right side of the seat strap should be pretty far forward on your seat so that the weight of the bassoon is gonna be um, distributed better so that it's not all on your hands when you're playing. And now when it comes to putting the bassoon together, you always work from the bottom up. So I'm gonna start with this joint here, this is the bottom of the bassoon. It's called the boot joint, and at the top of it, there's a smaller hole and a larger hole. And then you can grab the next joint, it's the smaller of the two in the middle of your case, that looks something like this. This is called the wing joint, and this is going to go into the smaller hole on the top of the boot joint. And when you're screwing it in, you wanna make sure that this little um, beam that's going across the wing joint lines up so that it's on top of this little lever thing on the side of your boot joint. And now you can take the longest joint in the case, um, very creatively called the long joint, and this is going to go into the larger hole on the boot joint. And once you put it in, you want to make sure that at the top of it, this is called a lock, you lock it in place into the hole on the wing joint so that they're not moving around on you. Next, you can take the last joint, this is called the bell, and you put it on top of the long joint so that the bars that are going across both line up so this, this one is on top. And last but not least, you grab your vocal right here, and the cork part is going to fit into the top of the wing joint. And you want to make sure that the cork part is greased up. I just use my mouth, but you can, you may opt for cork grease. Um, either way, when you're putting it in, you never want to hear the cork like screech. Um, that goes for all of your bassoon's joints. And now you want to be very careful when you put your vocal in. It's very fragile, and if you put it in wrong, it's going to easily bend. So don't hold it from right here when you're screwing it in. You want to hold it close to the cork near the top of the bend. Um, so firmly, but gently, you want to rock it side to side so that it screws in. Um, so that the little button part is lined up with the pad. And now I can put the reed on. And next, you can go ahead and hook it from with on, onto the seat strap. There's a hole at the bottom of the bassoon. There you go. Um, when you hold it in, in plank position, 
The bassoon should go about 45 degrees diagonally across your body. Um, and when you hold the bassoon in plain position, you want it to come to you. So don't adjust your, your posture that we talked about earlier um, to get to the bassoon. If the reed is not at your mouth already, you can adjust the height of, of it by adjusting the seat strap. So right now it's a little too low. It's like at my chin. So I'm gonna go to the left side of my seat strap and I'm gonna pull it. You may, ha you may have to like raise your thighs a little bit. And now there you go. And for the hand position, you want your, your hands to be very relaxed. So if your hand was just to be naturally at your side and you pull it up, this is kind of what we want. At the top side of the bassoon, you'll notice there's three holes. These are for your left hand. So pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger. And then you can keep your pinky, pinky just like resting above or on top of these. Don't push them, just like let it be. And then the back side, all of these keys right here are for your left thumb, but you don't have to worry about them right now. Just worry about this little guy called the whisper key. Just hold it right there. And then moving down the front part of the bassoon, there's two holes. It's for your right hand pointer finger and middle finger. And then below it, going down too, you should see um, a pretty big key is for your ring finger. And then your pinky can just be resting. I like to have it resting on this one. And now for your right thumb, these are all for your right thumb. And um, a bad habit that a lot of students fall into when they're starting is resting their, their right thumb um, above the key area like this. This is gonna, in the long run, slow down your technique. So try to make it a point to have your thumb just like rest in this area right here. And now that's how you hold a bassoon. So when you're done playing, the first thing that you want to do is unhook your bassoon from your seat strap. And then you can place the bottom of the, of the boot joint on the floor like this, and you can begin disassembling. First, I take the reed off and I like to blow the excess water out from the tube side of the reed. Um, I find that this helps it dry faster and hopefully last longer. And then you can go and put that back in your reed case. Next, gently rock the vocal back and forth, just like we talked about earlier, um, to remove it. And then you can blow the excess water out from the cork end and place it back in your case. Okay, now I have four joints left and only two of them need to be swabbed, the wing joint and the boot joint, um, because your spit or condensation doesn't really reach the other two. Um, so now working from the top down, you can take your bell off and put that back in your case. And then you unlock your long joint by lifting it up and then you can pull that out and put that back in your case. And now I take the wing joint out and I put it in the case momentarily so that I can swap the boot joint first. Um, I recommend getting two swabs. I have one for my boot joint and one for my wing joint, but if you have one that's meant for both, that is fine as well. And if you have a wooden bassoon, it's very important that you swab or that your swab is dry as it goes into the long joint side of the boot joint, this larger hole, because it's typically unlined with metal, so if it stays wet, it can rot. So you take a dry swab. Um, I have two swabs, so this is, is, is the bigger one. And I drop the weighted end into the larger hole. And then I jingle it a little, and then I turn it upside down so that it comes out through the smaller hole. And then I'll pull it out and put it back in your case. Next, you can take your ring joint you turn it upside down and from this bottom side you're going to drop your swab in and pull it through. Now you can put this joint back in your case. Lastly, don't forget to grab your seat strap from under you and put it back where it belongs. And that's all for this video. If you're enjoying these videos, Make sure to encourage other members in your ensemble to join musicmastery.band. And so everybody, 
can master their parts. Remember, you get three requests per month as a member, so keep practicing and we look forward to helping you master your next part.